All right. It's good to see all of you this morning. Thank you very much for that, and uh, thank you, Ann, for your leadership this past year. It's an amazing honor to stand before you today as your incoming president. I see this next year as an exciting time, not just for me, but for all of us. But before I get started, I've got a few key people I've got to thank, because if I don't do it now, I'll forget, uh, who have helped me along this way on my journey to becoming your president, such a wonderful, wonderful honor. Uh, I have to start with my family. They're all over here. Uh, I have to thank my wife, Alta, my kids, Josh, Caleb, Ben, Mary, and Carrie, and uh, my grandkids, Noah, Jonah, and uh, Cooper, who some of you saw on the dance floor. And... Uh, uh, they seem to enjoy themselves. Uh, from my local school district, Kellyville Public Schools, go ponies, all right. Uh, our superintendent, Mr. Joe Pierce, uh, two of my board members, Todd Gallahar, Julie Clayton, are with us today. My state uh, association exec, Mr. Sean Heim, our state board and staff, who just happened to be able to put on a great party if you ever need anybody, you know. Uh, yeah, those of you who are there, yes. We don't do anything without our staff, right? Yeah. Uh, they've all supported me so much through the years in all of my endeavors in my national board service. Uh, I'd like to also thank a couple of past state execs. Uh, Dr. Jeff Mills, uh, the late Dr. Jeff Mills, who I still miss, and of course, uh, Dr. Keith Ballard, for some reason, he saw something in me a long time ago that started me down this path within, it, within SBA. But you know, uh, all the people I've served with on this national board, uh, I've learned from you. They're all kind of right down here. And it's been a true pleasure. I've learned from you and you've inspired me. Uh, the presidents that I've served with, both in my state and in the national level the past several years, have inspired me and have been a great source of encouragement. And I've got to throw in there the past presidents of NSBA. There's a lot of them here this weekend, and Every one of them have come up and gave great advice, and I appreciate every one of you, because we all stand on your shoulders. You know, when you work for a living, like a lot of us do, uh, you can't do this type of service without uh, a very understanding boss. Well, I'm kind of lucky. My boss is a local school board member, all right? And he also happens to be president-elect of the Oklahoma School Boards Association. Yeah, next year he'll walk across this stage. And uh, he has supported me in all of my board service. So thank you, Mike Mullins, for being so supportive. Yeah. You know, none of us can do what we love to do without the support, encouragement, from all facets of our lives, our families, our friends, and our colleagues. So I thank all of you very much, very much for all you've done for me. Thank you so much. Yes. You know, last year, Ann Byrne uh, shared with you a little story of her family's history. My fam family's history is a little different. Uh, my parents were part of the greatest generation. They lived through the Great Depression and World War II. Both of them grew up on farms in Oklahoma. They were both single when the war began. My father was 24 and a full-time farmer. So like a lot of young men, went down to enlist in the Army and was turned away. He was to go home and continue to farm, which a lot of farmers were told to do that. My mother was 19. She signed up 
to go to woodworking class, of all things. And upon graduation, uh, she went to Kansas and built wooden gliders for the war effort. After a few months, I think a little homesickness kicked in. She came back to Tulsa, got a job at Douglas Aircraft Factory in Tulsa there, and she became part of a riveter crew. They built bombers, transport planes, all kinds of things. And on a riveter crew, there was usually a woman bucker and a man who ran the riveting gun. Keep in mind, my mom's a farm girl, and she never backed away from anything. After some time, she and her female friend went to their boss and said, uh, we think we can work as good as any man-woman team. So their boss let them try it, and after a few days, he come to them and said, you're right, you're right. And they got to work together as a riveting crew for the rest of the war. So yes, my mom, my mom was a Rosie the Riveter. Yes. Now I know you older folks in the audience probably know all about Rosie, uh, but maybe not everyone here today does. During the war, Rosie became a symbol of the work going on on the home front. There was a somewhat famous poster of a woman, Rosie the River, raising her arm to symbolize her strength and the strength of all the women taking on jobs which were considered at the time to be men's work. Do you know what was written on that poster? Oh, yeah, there's my mom. Yeah, yeah. You know what was written on that poster? We can do it. That was written on there. And, you know, I used to, my mom would love to tell stories. I guess that's where I get it. And that was her attitude. And that can-do attitude was instilled in me and my five siblings by my parents. That attitude that with hard work, determination, we can do it. We can do anything. And it's that same attitude that's been a big part of what inspires me in my board service. Mark Twain once said, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. You know? Yeah. Smart guy. Yeah. I knew at an early age why. I guess I'm a lucky guy, you know. I knew at early age that I could get the most satisfaction from serving others. And that my calling was service. In whatever I did, that it was service. And I've always wanted to serve wherever I can do the most good. Whether that's at the local, state, or national level. And at every level, my fellow board members have heard me say something along the lines of that it's my desire to always leave things better than the way I found them. But that begs the question, how do we make things better? You know, What is it that drives us to work towards improving the things that are important to us? You know, we all have reasons why we began service on our boards. You probably have your own story that you've told many times. I've found out that however I may save others, I always gain so much more than I give. It's what school board members do. You know, like so many other volunteers, we give selfishly so that others may benefit. But in our case, those who benefit the most from our service are the children of our public schools. Yes. You know, it isn't enough to just serve. There has to be positive outcomes. So how do we ensure 
that something good comes about as a result of our service. It isn't just enough to have a well-worded agenda that some lawyers blessed and an efficiently run meeting that you got out on time. You know, that's not enough. It takes board members who are motivated and inspired. So what does it take to motivate and inspire us? Well, all I have to do is look in the face of a student any age that is excited to learn. You know, and that makes me want to do whatever I can to help them achieve their hopes and their dreams. That motivates me. But it takes a little inspiration too. So how do we stay both motivated and inspired to do this work that we love to do? You know, I'm definitely not the expert here. I'm just a board member, you know. But when I'm around motivated and inspired people, I know it. You know why? Because things are getting done. That's always the telltale sign when things are getting done. You know, I look forward to this next year, my presidency of NSBA. I know we'll see important strides in not only our legislative, legal, and public advocacy work, but in our member services as well. You know, we're going to start the year off with two important tools that we hope are invaluable to our school boards. The relaunch of key work to school boards, the leading the change toolkit, and we hope that's just the beginning. I look forward to promoting public education, and helping to get the message out how public education does wonderful things every day in the lives of children all across the country. Yes, you guys, that's right. You know, I'm both motivated and inspired by NSBA's national campaign, Stand Up for Public Schools. You know, yes, great. You know, my message will not only be that we stand up for public education, but that we step up and speak up for public education as well. Yes. That campaign is designed to motivate us to action. You know, we all know the public education is under attack. We can't sit idly by while there's groups and individuals out there with selfish motives who see financial opportunities in privatizing public education. Yes, that's right. One person gets it, yeah. Yeah, all right. It will take action from all of us to come together and stand up for public education. We will all need to be willing to step up for public education and be responsible for the well-being of our students. It will take all of us to speak up for public education and be the voice of the many whose voices who aren't being heard. Yes. Yes, it is hard. It's hard work. And so we need to be unified in our message. We have to realize that the future of our nation's children makes it all worthwhile. So going back to what has inspired me in my life, that, that little phrase that was on that poster that came alive to me thanks to my mom. Folks, we can do it. We can stand up, step up, speak up, for public education, because we are motivated, we are inspired, and because we know the future of our children are worth all the work and all of the effort, we will stand up, speak up for public education. Thank you very much. Let's have a wonderful year. Don't forget, let's speak up, stand up for public schools, and let's step up to the plate and do our jobs. Thank you very much. We can do it.